Welcome to the flip side. We have one last problem that we want to talk about. So you're going to see a problem like this show up in the homework, and I don't want you to be thrown off. There is a key word here to pay attention to, and that is the keyword multiplicity. So in this problem, it's a polynomial of degree 4, so we expect there to be four zeros. Uh, typically, they give us some kind of hint, like they give us two factors or they give us two zeros, and we can get down from degree 4 to degree 2. But here, they're only giving us one zero, but they're telling us that it's a zero of multiplicity two. Now what that means is that this guy is a zero that happens not just once, but it shows up at kind of like a second time. Now it doesn't do anything weird um, to, to, to the graph or anything. Um, it doesn't give you an extra x-intercept, um, but it does kind of determine uh, how the graph behaves at that x-intercept, but we'll get to that uh, a little bit later. What it means is that when we do synthetic division, we can do it with this value of k as many times as we have that multiplicity. So if it were a multiplicity of 3, we could do synthetic division once, twice, three times. But here we're only going to do it two. Now understand the difference between this problem and some of the ones we've had in previous videos. So if I look at the example from a couple of videos ago, I gave you factors. Now when I gave you the factors, you had to do the opposite signs of what you saw here to get the zeros, 1 and negative 5. And those were the values that you used for the synthetic division here and here. For this one, I'm telling you the zero, so you're not going to change that sign. Like, this is your k value. All right, so let's see this. Right f of x is a product of linear factors. Well, that means that I know that x minus, let's see, this is x equals negative 3. So if we go back to the factor, that's coming from the factor x plus 3. And since it says it has a multiplicity of 2, that means that that factor shows up twice, like that. Listing all zeros. All right, so the zeros are going to be, well, I gave you negative 3, so you automatically know that one. It says it's a multiplicity of two, but you don't need to write it two times. We just understand that it's accounting for two of the four total zeros. List all intercepts, all right? So for the x-intercept, since this is a real number, since this is a real number, I automatically know that I get an x-intercept here. So this is going to be negative three comma zero and I could have a few more so we're going to find those out here in just a moment the y-intercept is going to be zero comma remember you plug in zero all of this stuff goes away except for 18 so we at least we at least have something to go off of here now let's do the synthetic division to try to break down that polynomial of degree four into something more manageable looks good. So there's k, x to the 4, 3, 2, 1, and then my constant. So I'm going to use negative 3 for my k value. x to the 4th, the coefficients here are 1, 3, negative 7, negative 15, and positive 18. All right, another example of synthetic division, and I know that you guys have this. So bring down the one, multiply to get negative three, combine to get zero. Negative three times zero is zero. These guys combine to get negative seven times negative 3, positive 21. Combine, this gives me 6. Multiply, I get negative 18, and I get a remainder of 0, which is what I'm supposed to have. Again, uh, no, you know, no surprise there. 
All right, well, since we have a multiplicity of two, that means that I can use synthetic division again with that same value. So I can do negative three here, and I should have a remainder of zero at the end. So let's, let's make sure that this works out right. So bring down the one, times negative three gives me negative three, combined give me negative three, this multiplies to nine, negative seven and nine is positive two, multiply times negative three we get negative six and yes there is my remainder of zero exactly what we were supposed to have. Things work out splendidly for us, right? Now, this piece right here, we go from x to the fourth, x to the third, to x squared. So it means we can take this guy in isolation and say this is x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. And once we solve this, that's going to finish answering the rest of our questions. So this guy factors as x minus 2 times x minus 1. Those are the factors of 2 that add to 3. And from here, x equals 2 or x equals 1. So let's see how all this fits back into our problem. If you go back to our original function, the way we were trying to factor this, this once we do the synthetic division, we were left with x squared minus 3x plus 2. But the complete factorization means with product of linear factors. That's not linear. So you still have the x plus 3s here. And as we just saw, these guys factor as x minus 2 and x minus 1. Now you might also see uh, the x plus 3 times itself condensed into a square, but this is okay for me, it doesn't really matter. Your zeros, you got negative three with a multiplicity of two, and from the work that we have at the bottom of the page, we've got x equals two and x equals one. So, we get two and one, and since both of those guys are real, they will correspond to x-intercepts. So we have the x-intercept of two, 0 and 1 0. And so that's how we deal with the multiplicity. It's using it not just once, but using it a second time because the multiplicity was 2. All right. So now we've gone through this uh, most of the concept here for finding zeros of a polynomial function. And once you take this and once you dive into, into that my math lab homework and start knocking those guys out. After this, we're going to be talking about how do we find zeros of a polynomial function when we aren't given any clues? And to answer that, we're going to turn to the rational zeros theorem. So we'll see you then.